SCTV now presents For the Record. We preview a historic leadership summit next on For the Record. I'm Neil Heinen. Thanks for joining us. Over the last couple of years, Madison 365, the rapidly growing online journalism and community conversation site, has published lists of the most influential leaders of color in Wisconsin. And then, in a stroke of genius, the website's executives decided to bring those leaders together for a summit to explore a wide range of issues facing this state and its citizens. And then, in yet another stroke of genius, the Ho-Chunk Nation agreed to host the summit. So we're going to talk about what the summit will look like, some possible outcomes, and what it all means for Wisconsin moving forward, as I welcome back to For the Record, Madison 365 publisher and CEO Henry Sanders. How are you doing? Good to see you, Henry. Thanks for doing you. this. Yeah. Um, this feels like a really big deal to me, but maybe just in terms of context for people, talk a little bit about how Madison 365 is doing, how you kind of decided yeah. to recognize these leaders of color, and then what led up to the summit. So Madison 365, we're doing pretty well. We're continuing to grow. Our reach is continuing to grow. Uh, we're, we're doing better than I ever dreamed we would. And so we started the most influential list. As you know, we did a Latino uh, most influential list and African American most influential yeah. list. And throughout that, the reason I wanted to do it was I really wanted to highlight to people in the state of all the wonderful things people of color are doing and not just talking about us and, you know, disparities and just like how people of color are flourishing in our state. Yeah. And out of that, we started doing different events where we started bringing some of those folks together. And I started seeing the power of why these people, all these folks didn't know each other. And when they got to a room together, it was just magic. Like yeah. things were just uh, amazing to watch. So we're like, what can we do to make this more tangible, more substantive? And that's why we came with the, le the leadership summit. Um, what was it, 35? What was the number of each? For the list? Yeah. They changed. So you, uh, one was a 48. 48, okay. One was 28, one was 35. So we're done for three years yeah. now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, as someone who's uh, uh, done some of these lists over the years, um, there's inherent risks in it. Um, uh, I mean, you, ha you had to make some tough choices, and I'm yeah. sure there were some people that felt left out. How has it been received in the communities of color? That's that, now, that's true. Now, there was some risk, yeah. right? Uh, but I, I think after a while, people understood the heart behind it. The heart was really just trying to highlight the people who are doing wonderful stuff in our community. The downside is, we're going to miss some people, uh, but I'm proud of that because when we first started, people were saying, Henry, you had 48 people. There's no way you can find that many people next year for people of color. And it's been total opposite yeah. that there's so many people that we have, to, we have to find more room to put them on the list. So, yeah, there was some risk. But I think people understand that, you know, the list is not just trying to say these are the only people doing good things. These are saying these are people we want to highlight now. We've, we might not have found this year, but next year we'll put you on the list. Yeah. So I think after people found out that, it, it opened up, okay, these guys are trying to highlight. It's not trying to say this person is the most influential. It's trying to say these are people doing really good work in that community, and how can we highlight them? Yeah. It probably, I mean, I assume you... you experience this the um, there's always a, a question about this portrayal of the homogeneity of of, of any group mm -hmm. that all of the african americans <laughs> you know think the same way and and view leadership the same way all of the latino yeah. community and uh, if anything i think your list point out the diversity within the diversity and it's funny you're saying that because the first year we had on the list we had a uh, sheriff clark on there right from <laughs> milwaukee Controversial and people, just, especially Madison folks, right? right? We're a statewide list, but Madison people just were really upset about it. And I think that that was a good—it was good for us, though, to show people, look, this is not just about people of color you agree with, right? But it's most people of color who are influential, and he is clearly influential. Oh, now yeah. you might disagree with him, you might not like him, but he was clearly influential. Right. So I think that was true. That people started to say, "Oh, wait, wait a minute." They, these people think differently, they're not all the same, and right. it gave, I think gave a lot of people a lot of different perspectives, and the things I heard from parents the most, I heard parents contacting us about their kids seeing people who are actually flourishing, who are actually doing stuff professionally, and I had parents calling me crying, talking about literally crying that their kids actually got to see someone who was doing something positive in the community that they've never seen that in the media, mm -hmm. so that was powerful for too. Um, anybody 
watching this show on TV or, on, or online could go to madison365.org and find the list. Yeah. What, how's your, what is your statewide reach like, Henry? How are people around the state accessing Madison 365? We're doing pretty well. Uh, about so, so we have a, we're more like a regional, so about 20% of our readership is Chicago, uh, about 15 to 20% is Milwaukee, the majority of the parts um, Dane County. We have a good about 6%, 7% in the Fox Valley, so we're doing pretty well. Um, on a slow month for us, we're reading about 750,000. On an average month, probably 1.2 1 1 .2 million. On a high month, 1.8 million. Mm -hmm. So it varies for us, but it's all about content. The more content we kick out, the more people come to us. I mean, I think that's an important context as we begin to talk about the summit, um, because th this is, by design, a statewide leadership summit with people of color from all over the state. And I guess I should ask you, how, how did you do region by region around the state? in finding leaders of color? You know, it's been a blessing since my background. As you know, I used to work for the Obama administration. Before mm -hmm. that, um, I worked for WIDA and I ran for lieutenant governor. So I have a background getting around the state. And yeah. so through that, I met a lot of wonderful people. And when you get around the state, you start to find the people who are doing wonderful things. And someone says, hey, look, there's this person doing this in this area. And then you start talking to people and they start having network and they start finding out the people are very influential. And when I say influence species, but people can move people, power, I mean people, money, or policy, right? And so wherever those people kind of fit in that box in those areas, um, I usually have people highlight them and show them to me. But over the years, we also have people referring people to us and nominating people to us over the years also. Right. Um, <clears throat> disproportionately, the bigger metro areas, I would assume, Milwaukee, Madison, mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of... Uh, of leaders of color. Yeah, that's true. I think it's Milwaukee, uh, Madison, Fox Valley, and Racine area actually does pretty well too. Right. Yeah, Fox Valley's growing. I mean, I think people don't know how many people of color are there. Yeah, yeah. Really Green Bay, Appleton, Oshkosh is really growing, uh, especially in the Hmong community, Latino community, really growing in those areas. I think it's interesting in Milwaukee in particular because for many, many people outside of Milwaukee and for many, many white people in this state, Milwaukee is perceived as this racially really conflicted area and the statistics are dismal. It also has a very large number of African-American professionals, mm -hmm. of African-American wealth yes. in, in, in that community yes. that it just gets lost, I think, in all of the disparity. Talk. It's funny you say, you're saying that because I try to explain to people the difference between Madison and Milwaukee. And how I try to explain it is saying that Milwaukee has a really high middle class people of color who are doing extremely well. Like some people on our list are part owners of the Bucks. Valerie Daniels is like one of the biggest owners of our Burger Kings across the country. Right. I mean, Euless Payne owns an oil company. I mean, so there's a, these are some people who have extreme influence and, and real money. Yeah. And Madison's a little different. Our power tends to be more grassroots. People are running nonprofits. Uh, people who are really in the community, and in Milwaukee, it tends to be more the people in corporate America who, people of color at least, who have the influence. So yep. it's a really odd dynamic. Uh, I can't wait to bring those people together. Yeah. Those, that, those are going to be some fascinating conversations. Well, we're going to talk about that and yeah. preview the summit further with Henry Sanders when we come back right after this. For the Record, sponsored by MG&E, your community energy company. Hey, it's practically time to go back to school. No way. That's right. It's time for the back to school sale at Denver Mattress. It's only July. It's never too early to start saving money. Right now, the Loveland Twin Mattress is just $149.99. Or get any size Aspen bed in a box model with a free space base, and the shipping is free. We better get shopping. I'm, I'm not ready yet. No, Mom. Don't miss the back to school sale on now at Denver Mattress. I see a football with bat wings. I see a wizard. That's his nose. I see Lake Michigan. Lake Superior. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you that. I see a wall. Platinum Plus with Stain Shield technology is up to 50% more washable and stain resistant than a leading premium paint. Menards and Dutch Boy have you covered. Go ahead, live your life. Thousands of people will be out enjoying cream puffs, farm animals, spin city, and all the fair food. There's something for everyone to do, and there's something to eat. Make your day wonder fair. Wisconsin State Fair, presented by U.S. Cellular. August
August 2nd through the 12th. The words everyone dreads. I ended up with metastatic breast cancer. But giving up isn't in Mary Goose's DNA. My goal is to raise a million dollars. Doing something good, one stroke at a time. Monday on News 3 at 10. News 3 and Channel 3000 put top stories and breaking news at your fingertips. Video alerts and forecasts. Clean, simple, and fast. Download the Channel 3000 app today. On October 16th through the 18th, Henry? Is October 18th and 19th. 18th and 19th, the Madison 365 Leadership Summit will be held at the uh, Ho-Chunk Convention Center in Wisconsin Dells. It is the first of its kind. Mm -hmm. It is a gathering of, uh, of the leaders of color identified by Madison 365 over the last few years. And Madison 365 CEO and, and publisher Henry Sanders and I are talking about this summit. So in terms of, of relationships, Henry, um, what has been the initial response from the Latino community, the Ho-Chunk community, some of the other communities of color about working collaboratively on, uh, on this event? Excitement. Uh, I think people are also interested and curious because it's never been done before. Mm -hmm. But I also think people understand the power of getting all those folks in a room to have substantive conversations. And also, I think it's important that it's not just for the most influential people on the list, it's for any people of color across the state who want to come because, you know, I'm, I'll be 45 in December, but I remember when I was 20. And I would have loved to be in a room with some of these folks to yeah. learn and just listen. Uh, I would have <coughs> died for opportunity like this. Yeah. And I, I, actually I was thinking about this, I'm like, what could, I ha what could I have done to help a younger me? Right. And this is it, right? So if I could have put a younger me in a room with these folks, just to think about the experience um, that you would get and the knowledge you would get by being around some of those folks. Um, you know, maybe this is coming from a white guy. I guess I'd be disappointed if there weren't white people there. Mm. But what's the role for white people? Yeah, I mean, we, how do you... How you, do you know, I love, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, I hope you come in. Are you I'm, coming? I'm coming, okay. absolutely. Okay. Right. Yeah. okay, yes. Um, yeah, one, we want white people to come, right? We want this to be an opportunity for them to come learn um, because this is about Wisconsin. So this is, this is a, it's for people of color, but it's about how can people of color help attract and retain people of color here in Wisconsin? And white people have to be part of that conversation. Right. The difference is we're leading the conversation and talking to each other so we can have authentic conversations to each other, but we also can problem solve from our lens. And we want our white brothers and sisters to be there so they can hear some of the things that how we see it, how we feel, because it'll help them also when they go back to their areas. Right. I don't, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I get, I get the sense, and it's, this is not a, a you know, a, a, an exclusive statement, but I get the sense that even leaders of color, e e executives of color, professionals, mm -hmm. people who are, are CEOs or on boards, mm -hmm. um, despite their position, despite their success, face different barriers than white people in those same roles. Right, and I think that's true. Uh, and this is why I wanted to have for people of color talking to each other, because in those conversations, you'll hear more people being honest with each other about what's going on. And I wanted them to be able to talk to each other and feel like they're not alone, they're not isolated, that other people are going through these things, but also how other people have gotten past some of those barriers, some of those stereotypes, how to get over some of those racism things, and how, and how they thrived. And I think that's a different conversation where you have to, you have to talk to people actually intimate with it, who've actually gone through it. So that's a big reason why they do it also. I mean, if, if, if we acknowledge that there is white discomfort by seeing people of color in, in, in those positions, that maybe one way of getting past that and getting more comfortable mm -hmm. is seeing the breadth of that mm -hmm. leadership, the diversity of that leadership, and, and again, I don't know how you're gonna do this, but what it means to the state right. to have that kind of inclusive, um, leadership diversity you know and this we stand a really good point again Neil is like when I worked for Obama administration I was in charge of six states and I would go talk to some of the top CEOs across the Midwest and I would ask what's the number one issue for you they all would talk about retention attract and retention staff and they started digging in deeper they're talking about people of color like yep. how can we attract and retain and compete with people of color demographics are shifting how do we compete and so for me I'm thinking as a Wisconsin guy who loves this state what can we do to compete and what can we do to make sure we attract people of color here but once they're here how do we keep them here and people who are here how do we keep retain them and as you know some some talented people have left and so I was thinking about if someone googles Wisconsin right now 
say Google Madison, Black Madison, Latino Madison, Latino Milwaukee, the data wouldn't, it wouldn't be a good, I mean, what people would find wouldn't be positive. Right. So how can we actually address those issues in a way that's true, but also so that we have a game plan and how we want to have people address some of those issues? That's what we're trying to start that conversation. <clears throat> the, um, the idea that states like uh, Georgia, Maryland, who have so many leaders of color, I mean, at every level, mm -hmm. political, economic, you know, business, nonprofit, um, this sort of a conversation would probably seem unnecessary in some of those states. I, I think that's partly true. I think they would not talk about it from a perspective of what, how do we solve some of these problems. However, they probably get together saying just to network, to be around each other, to peer-to-peer -peer networking. Right, right. That would be something that even a lot of other states don't do. So I think that would be powerful for other states to do. But as far as talking about some of the problems that we have, they wouldn't have some of those problems. Right. Yeah. So d do you anticipate some tensions, you know, I hope so. in, in the room from, from different communities? Yeah. I, ho I hope positive tension. I, ho I, I hope positive dialogues. If not, then we're not having true, authentic conversations. Um, so I hope so, but I hope it's, it's not tension, but it's a real, uh, people are really trying to figure out how do we solve this problem. Uh, my perspective might be different from your perspective, but I also want people to find themes, right? To find when they leave their best practices and where people can feel like, okay, well, I'm not alone in these issues. Yeah. There's some risk, I think, in trying to, to, to uh, push too much in, into an agenda. Mm -hmm. For example, I think about the, the issues that um, Muslim Americans, Muslims in Wisconsin mm -hmm. face that are very, very different than some of the issues African Americans and, and Latinos face, and yet there are some shared issues there, mm -hmm. and I think there are some Muslims in, in, in Wisconsin who are starting to take on more prominent roles within their communities. How do those conversations take place? Well, uh, what I was trying to do is also for our panels, I, 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 diversity is one thing, but inclusion is more important to me, and so I mean that we wanted to have panels that had, were like about on disparity, education, women in excellence, but making sure that we have panels that have different people from different backgrounds in those. So Latino, uh, black, Hmong, Native American, etc. Make sure we have their part of those conversations where it wasn't just focused on what black people think or Latino people think. We wanted to have an a, a inclusive conversation, a, a robust conversation, talking about what's the full picture for people of color. About leadership from so many different perspectives. Right, right. Leadership, I, I'm excited about the social justice panel, actually, uh, just because how do we define social justice now? It used to be people would think of it like the NAACPs, the urban yep. leagues. Civil rights. Civil rights, but now we have people like the Black Lives Matter, like, you know, we have young, gifted and black folks. Yeah. It's a different conversation yeah. uh, for our, our Latino brothers and sisters. Immigration, does that, how does that play in social justice today? Yeah. So I'm excited about those type of conversations that no one's ever had before. You've touched on some generational issues, too, and we're going to talk about that when we come back with Henry Sanders right after this. Asphalt Paving is celebrating 40 years in business by offering you $250 off your asphalt paving project for residential and commercial, from new construction to replacements. Call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. This is an exciting time in the energy industry. The world is changing, and we want to work toward common goals. Toward a cleaner energy future, driven by innovation, powered by working together. By working with customers, we provide customers what they want. MGME is your community energy company for the future. Powering our community, sharing your values, partnering to meet your needs. Visit energy2030together.com to create a more sustainable future together. Spectrum is redefining everything you thought you knew about internet, TV, and voice services to bring you the ultimate triple play. Introducing a true revolution in internet speed with game-changing new starting speeds of 200 megabits. That's double our previous speed and double the bandwidth for the fastest surfing, streaming, gaming, and more. Get Spectrum Internet starting at 200 megabits for $29.99 a month with no data caps and a free modem. 
Call 844-419-2999. Then catch all your favorites in stunning HD. Plus thousands of titles free on demand with Spectrum TV for $29.99 a month. And get Spectrum Voice with unlimited calling to the U.S., Mexico, and more for $29.99 a month. Call 844-419-2999. Switch to Spectrum Internet TV and Voice for $29.99 a month each with no contracts. Call 844-419-2999. Wells Asphalt Paving is celebrating 40 years in business by offering you $250 off your asphalt paving project for residential and commercial, from new construction to replacements. Call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. with my colleague, Madison 365 publisher and CEO Henry Sanders, and we are talking about the Leadership Summit that Henry and Madison 365 are hosting, are, 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 um, are, are putting on, actually the Ho-Chunk Nation is hosting it in Wisconsin Dells in October. Um, and, uh, and just before the break, I was thinking about the importance of having young people of color there and uh and because their perspective as you said is going to be considerably different than some of the more established yeah. leaders there so are you confident in attracting them and getting them to this event and oh yeah, yeah. That, i mean we're already we have already, uh, over have a hundred people already coming already uh yeah it'll be a really diverse panels from age uh, and the, the generational thing would be the most interesting yeah. i i don't know how that'll go yeah. I think that's where the most tension will be is from a generational perspective. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be good, but it, there'll be some really true and uh, harsh conversations, I think, about how the younger generation sees things versus the old generation. Just in, in terms of nuts and bolts, how many can you, um, ha how many people can you handle for registration and, mm -hmm. and, and how can people register? Well, you know, we were hoping, if, if you were just talking to me, I would say if we just had 100 people in a, to a real, real conversation, that would have been, for me, that would have been great. We're already surpassing that. My guess will be around 300 people uh, for the conference. We probably have, Ho Chunk's a big, big place. We probably have about 700 people if we really wanted to. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so probably about 200, 300 people we're probably expecting. I'm surprised to hear you say that. I think it's going to be a bigger number. Uh, I, that's my team says that too. I, I know. And I, I, from your perspective, I'm I understand to, why I'm you're doing to, that. Yeah, yeah. I have to tell myself mentally too, like, okay, we'll just. My team thinks it's going to be a lot bigger than that too, but you know, we'll see. The timing of it. I mean, just right before the governor's race. In October, yeah. I mean, here in Madison, we are now going to have a historic mayoral race with yeah. with Maris Oglin deciding not to run, and with already, uh, you know, candidates of color, unprecedented candidates of color lining up for that. Yeah. I um, mean, just and. and you know, even looking ahead in, in the national context of what's going on, it, it seems like the perfect time for this conversation. Well, I hope any time's a perfect time for it. But yeah, politically, October will be a very interesting time. As you said, uh, Mayor Slogan decided not to run, who is a legend, an yeah. icon in our city, which is a historical thing. Uh, so yeah, I mean, even if Malin, you know, Malin Mitchell gets yes. past the primary, uh, he could be the first African-American really to be really in that position. Yeah. Uh, that could be a powerful time. But you know, I. I try to stay away from politics. Yes, I understand. <laughs> I understand. Uh, hard as that might be. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, all right. So in so in your heart of hearts, what I mean, what what's the the best outcome for this? That people see the value of it, mm -hmm. and that people want to continue to do it. Yep. Uh, that a second annual. A second annual. Yep. All right. Uh, we're going to announce some exciting things there uh, that we want to continue to do. Okay. But also, I think uh, people come and say there was a real value that they got to be around people who look like them. Uh, or had the same experience with them, that's something they've never had before, and that something came out of that, even if it's just a one-on-one -on -one relationship that they met. Um, that's what I'm hoping. Uh, and from a bigger state perspective, I'm hoping that the state can say, okay, here's some of the things we've heard from some of these people of color who are doing wonderful things in the state. How can we start to act on some of these things? How does this help us decide how we're going to attract and retain people of color in the state? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I love the fact that it's at the, that it's at the Ho-Chunk Convention yeah. Center, you know, that you didn't have to go to some white you know, convening place, right. white-owned convening place. Right. That these are communities of color that are that are putting this on for communities of color. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just it just feels good. Well, you know, I well one was because we really want to start doing more in the Native American community, right? Um, and we really were starting to think, well, if we're going to do something like this, where do we spend our dollars? 
where do we, who are the people we can help? And we said, well, why don't we go talk to our brothers and sisters, the Native American brothers and sisters, and see if they want to partner. And luckily, Host Hunt jumped all in, and they're extremely being a partners in this. We're excited to be working with there them. There are very influential Native American leaders yes. in this state. Yes, and they care about the state. Yeah, they're growing in influence. Yeah. yeah. So do you have most of the people that you've... Um, recognized coming uh, to this in one way or another? A lot of them. Yeah, yeah a lot of them. I'm sure it's impossible to get yeah. all of them. Uh, but we have a lot of them coming. A lot of them will be on panels. Uh, so a lot of them are coming. Yeah. Yeah, and we're excited about that. But I don't want it just to be about them. I want other people of color to come in the state. If you're in Eau Claire, if you're in uh, Wausau, if you're the only person of color in an organization, this is a leadership development. This is a professional development opportunity for you. So I'm hoping that they will also come. It took Madison 365 to do this, Henry. Oh. I mean, nobody else right. nobody else could pull it off, so congratulations. Well, thank you. You're coming, though. I'm coming. Okay. Madison365.org right. to register. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this. You bet I'm coming. Just when you think it can't get any worse, it does. In Wisconsin, abortion is still a crime. And I can't believe that I'm having to fight the same fights that my grandmother fought. You know, as a parent, I think about my daughters. I tell my girls, we can't look backwards. We have to move forward. We have to build the future that we want. I'm Kelda Royce. As your governor, I'll lead Wisconsin forward from day one. Hey, it's practically time to go back to school. No way. That's right. It's time for the back to school sale at Denver Mattress. It's only July. It's never too early to start saving money. Right now, the Loveland Twin Mattress is just $149.99. Or get any size Aspen bed in a box model with a free space base, and the shipping is free. We better get shopping. I'm, I'm not ready yet. No, Mom. Don't miss the back to school sale on now at Denver Mattress. At WISC TV3, part of our mission is to serve our community in times of need. But we can't always do that without your help. Together, we've raised over $160,000 for our Sun Prairie neighbors. And our friends at Bank of Sun Prairie will ensure that 100% of your donations stay local, providing help where it's needed most. Thank you for helping us keep Sun Prairie strong. Together, we can do great things. Monday morning, we're preparing for storm chances pretty much all week. Hattie will let us know when you can expect rain. And starting Monday, smoking will no longer be allowed in public housing across the country. We'll ask the experts about that new mandate at 4.30. Butter alternatives. Are they healthy? Are they harmful? You really got to read the label to understand these ones. We investigate. I want you to understand and learn more about all these butter alternatives. Next Oz. Weekdays at 3 on WISC TV 3. My thanks to Henry Sanders and to you for joining us. We'll see you next week on For the Record.